Last tutorial, we ended with logging Hello World on this action node. Now delete that action task, right click, go down to Composites, and we're going to use a selector node. A selector node is unique because it keeps going until it finds something that it succeeds with. Let's do this task. Fails? Who cares? Let's go to the next one. I believe we've only used the sequencer, and the sequencer, the first task fails, <laughs> the tree fails, restarts. And on the other hand, the selector just keeps going until something succeeds. Now the next node we're gonna have is, dun dun dun, dun conditional node. It's much better to just type it in instead of searching for it like I'm doing here. I forgot to mention the first task we are actually doing on the left hand side with that conditional node is checking a trigger to see have we found an enemy. Now that's first and foremost because the things on the left they run first. And knowing whether there's an enemy around you is definitely the most important task any AI or character could do. Now on the right hand side, we're gonna create an action task. And we're gonna worry about that one later, but right now let's leave a little comment or a tag and say walking. This is where we're gonna actually do our walking or running or even patrolling. Now there's something we need to do so we need to go to the selector and the conditional task. We need to make these dynamic. And if these weren't dynamic, let's say all of a sudden we run into an enemy. Boom. We need to react to it. But it's not going to react to it until the behavior tree resets and starts back at the beginning. Dynamic means if something happens, boom, we're reacting regardless of where we are in the tree. Now back on the conditional node, we're going to assign a conditional task. And that task is check trigger can see right now this check trigger is using the collider on ourself but our collider that we have on our character is our actual character collider it's stopping us from running into the wall but before fixing that let's change it to trigger stay specific tag only and our object tag is going to be enemy and of course we need to save that game object we run into so we can apply attacks or chase to it so let's save that as enemy now on my Toon Soldiers, I'm going to change the tag to that to Player, and on the Dungeon Skeletons, or both Skeletons, they're going to be marked as Enemies. Now of course, let's double check, make sure this works before we keep moving forward, do an action task, debug log. But before we can test, we need to first create our Sphere Collider, our Collider for all the characters. That is why I'm creating a folder, calling it Prefab, and we're actually going to make this Collider as a Prefab only because we might want to alter it for all the characters at one time. We might, we might not. Better safe than sorry. Now back in the hierarchy, let's create a new empty object. Call that character area trigger. And of course, we need to add a collider to it, a sphere collider. If you make sure that game object is placed roughly around where one of your characters is, we can bump up that radius and see what an appropriate size could be. 